Welcome to today's stream talk between JW Player and Wowza. And today we're going to focus on Apple HLS adaptive bitrate streaming, um, also wrapping some additional functionality around that, like DVR, getting that working on Wowza, getting it working with your own JW Player account. And joining me today is Eric Boyd, who's the product manager for JW. Hey, Eric, how are you? Great. Thanks, Ryan. Absolutely. And to get started, I think let's just give people a quick rundown of what ABR is and how it works. And there's one of my favorite demos that's on the JW site. And if I click the play button here real quick, um, maybe Eric, you can talk us through what's going on here, um, how Adaptive Bitray is actually working and how JW is is handling this. Sure. So uh, the basic concept behind Adaptive Bitrate streaming is giving a video player uh, multiple quality streams so that it, it, as a viewer, if you ever encounter any bandwidth issues, you, you really don't get stuck buffering. And buffering is one of the worst experiences in, in video. So instead of buffering, basically the video player detects that there's been a drop in bandwidth and it can start actually downloading a lower quality so there is no interruption in, in that uh, video viewing experience. So what we're seeing right here is the, the bandwidth that's available is um, you, you might actually have a, a ability to upswitch a little bit higher than what the looks like we're at, like a medium to low quality. But you're in a small size player, so the JW player isn't going to download a higher quality video if it doesn't need to. So what Ryan just did there was did a manual switch, and you can see that now we're in a, a, a much higher quality. You see that the player is actually downloading um, those the, those high quality segments. So if the bandwidth were to drop, however, we would see the player start to download lower quality segments, and then it would adaptively switch and seamlessly switch. So there's just no ad, no interruption to the the viewer's experience at all. Uh, the tricky thing with adaptive streaming is that it's not actually supported natively in a lot of browsers. Uh, it, uh, especially with Apple HLS, it's actually only supported in native video tag on iPhones, our iOS devices, Safari, uh, and Microsoft Edge has it, and Android Chrome supports it. Other than that, you actually need to use a, a video player that supports it or use media source extensions to convert the HLS video format into a different format that the browser can natively understand. And I think one of the benefits here with Adaptive, it, it, it's not just the available bandwidth, it's also recognized as the size of the player, like you mentioned, Eric. So if, if I do, was to go full screen here, it's going to know that I'm going full screen now. And then if I have the available bandwidth, it's going to deliver me the higher end resolution to match whatever res resolution I'm on my device as well. Right, exactly. There we go. You just saw it happen right there. Yeah, and if I switch back out of this, you guys can see that jump that, that just happened. And of course, the jump back down now to a lower resolution since I'm in a smaller player. Um, so I think that's a pretty good overview of kind of what's happening with adaptive streaming with HLS. And there are other protocols as well that, that are kind of embracing this ABR technology, pretty much all HTTP streaming protocols. But for today's demo, we're going to focus on HLS and show how to enable this. So in order to do that, let me start from the live stream side. Uh, we're going to show a live stream. Um, you can implement this for both video on demand and for live. But for today's example, I'm actually going to fire up Wirecast, Telestream Wirecast, and, and push a live stream into my Wowza streaming engine server. So you can see I have a version of Wowza running up in the cloud. I've got a trial license in here. Um, and what I'm going to do to start with is actually um, push a live stream directly in here. And you, I've already configured Telestream Wirecast, which is my software encoder to do this. And before I, I do that, I just want to show you kind of what I've done on the Wowza side to enable this. And if I come into my applications, I have my default live application set up here. And you see that I've come in here and I've actually enabled the transcoder. And the Wowza transcoder can take in one high quality stream and then be able to transcode to multiple, multiple different renditions to enable that adaptive bitrate delivery that can be then delivered to JW Player for delivery um, at the client level. So if I jump into transcoder, by default when you install Wowza it doesn't come enabled. All you have to do is click on the enable transcoder. And you can see here that the fallback template, the, the default template for this particular transcoder channel is set to transcoder rate. If I look at that template, I'm going to look at this and open this up. I have this enabled for seven different, several different renditions. So here's the source rendition, which in this example is 1080p. I have a 720p, 360p, 240, 160, and so on. Um, and I can really quickly enable that. 
So I've already enabled that on the account. I've restarted this live application. If I come into my incoming streams, you can see I don't have anything coming in currently. So what I'm going to do is push this from Telestream Wirecast. So I've configured that. It's now live streaming. Um, if I go ahead and push this live, you can see here's my live feed of the soccer game. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this lower third add this icon and push that out and now this will be coming in directly into the Wowza server. So if I switch back over here, if I refresh this view, you can see here's my source stream that's coming in and here are all the different transcoded renditions that are going, uh, that are being transcoded and being assembled. So if I pull up one of these lower end renditions, I can actually view this directly in here. I can see it's at a lower resolution or lower bitrate. I can view this in my test players and just make sure that everything's working nicely. And here's our RTMP feed. I can look at this on Apple HLS or Dash or any others. So the question now is how do I assemble all of these and let JW Player know that all these different renditions are available? If I go into mobile here, here you can see there is an HLS URL that I could grab, but this is only the 360p rendition. So how do I grab all those and put those into a group um, and then deliver that smile file to JW so JW Player knows that all those renditions are available? Well, we have a way to do that. We have a support article um, on how to set up and run Wows and Transcoder for live streaming. In here, um, we have something called name groups. And name groups is the ability to grab all these different renditions and assemble them in a nice, neat manner and deliver that with an M3U8 or smile file to JW. And you can see here is the syntax for Apple HLS. So I've got my IP address, port number, my live application name. Here is that name group, the NGRP, and the name of my stream, my stream underscore all. This underscore all will actually grab all of those different renditions that are available. So if I go back in and look at my transcoder, in here when I look at my transrate template, here's where I can see my stream name groups that are set up for this particular profile. So in here you can see I've set up underscore all. This is by default and it's grabbing all of the different renditions that are available inside of that transcoder profile. So what I'm able to do now is, is grab all of those using this URL syntax and then do that. So what I've done is I've pulled up this code. I've just copy and pasted this into my um, editor. You can see here is that URL. And all I've done is actually added my IP address here for my Wowza server. So it's got all the same syntax. It's grabbing the name group, my stream underscore all, if your stream was named something else. You could replace that in here. And then you'll notice what I've done here as well. I've appended the question mark DVR. And what that allows me to do is enable the DVR functionality. So the live pause, um, playback, rewind, that has integration with JW Player um, to enable that for all of these different renditions as well. So I'm going to grab this URL and I'm going to jump over to JW now. And this is uh, my JW dashboard for my particular account. And maybe, Eric, you can walk me through a little bit um, how I go about actually adding this inside of my JW Player dashboard. Sure, yeah, so this is actually, uh, we've hopefully designed this to be a really simple and straightforward process. Uh, you actually can very quickly uh, drag and drop files to upload to JW Player, or if you're in this process where your, your stream is coming from someplace else, like a live streaming service like Wowza, you can just grab the URL and paste it into this URL field, and then click Embed. Every account comes with three pre-built players, and you can just choose those which player that you you want to embed with uh, in this process, or you could have created your own custom player like we've seen here. This is a Wowza branded player. We've got a Wowza logo. We've got Wowza coloring on this, and these are very easy to set up by, uh, with the, the players dashboard. You can go in and, and uh, easily toggle um, each of these these player settings. Uh, you can even change, like Ryan just showed right here, which of these players you want to embed with. But this is just really meant to be a, a straightforward, easy process of getting uh, your content on your page live right away. So in in the embed um, in the embed window, quickly customize some features of the player. Um, you can change playback options with a with point and click. I have an auto start loop. Uh, preload, so this way as the page loads, you're actually starting to download some of the media to have a really fast time to first frame. And the design is really interesting too because you have these uh, these pre-built skins which changes the layout and the shapes of the elements. And then each of these you can just very quickly change uh, primary highlight or background color to make any of these a really unique skin just to fit your branding needs. 
Uh, and then the logo is really nice as well. You can add your logo to it. Uh, you can set a click-through URL of that logo. Um, and now, recently fixed, we're able to actually position that logo uh, with CSS anywhere um, in, the, in that player viewport. Yeah, what we've been able to do with this custom WOW, this is actually the, the player that we use on our own website. Um, and we've built in the casting as well, so we can actually Chromecast and we have that implemented in the player. So if the client's on a network that has casting available, it will be, it'll show up there as an option. Um, and then we've also implemented our analytics tracking as well, so we can track analytics in the player. Um, so yeah, it's extremely easy to use. Um, and this is the one we're going to use for this particular demo here as well. So if I jump back here, um, I'll go back into the URL again. Here's that URL that we got from Wowza. Um, and maybe, Eric, you can talk to me specifically about how what's happening here to actually enable this and what options are available to preview as well. Yeah, so right now what you're seeing is a marrying of the content URL with those player settings. And there's two different types of uh, embed mechanisms from, uh, from this view. You can quickly grab a single line of JavaScript and add that to your page exactly where you want the player to appear. And this JavaScript will add a div to the page, and the player will render in that div. Um, you can, and this is probably what you've done here. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I've, I've been able to just grab that really easily. I've set it to be 100% inside of this particular div. So it's a nice big player for this page. You can see the Chromecast functionality um, and all that. So the copy and paste literally one line of code and it, it's up and running. Really easy to use. And, and then the other option is very similar to that. It's just an iframe instead of a single line of JavaScript. But the same concept is, is behind it. You can just copy and paste that and put it anywhere on your page. Yeah, and I really like the, the preview page option as well to get a, just a quick render of this to a page to see kind of what it looks like and how it's working. Yeah, and in this particular example here, you can see um, I have got 22 minutes of content available, so I can actually live rewind this to several minutes ago. You can see it pulls up. This is that DVR functionality that we enabled on the server and then included that URL or that appended that parameter in the URL as well. Um, and what you'll notice is if I actually hover over this HD button, I have this set to 1080p by default, but if I switch this to auto, it's going to do that adaptive bitrate um, functionality that Eric was just showing us earlier in the demo. And that, that kind of intelligence, we get this question a lot, is, yeah, we need to enable the transcoder settings inside of uh, Wowza, but the intelligence to switch between those is all JW player, right, Eric? Yep, that's, that's right. The player is on the client side detecting what the actual available bandwidth is and it makes the decision of which stream to, to use. Absolutely. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that was a pretty quick run through of how to do this. Um, another way that you can actually do this as well is if you actually grab your own um, code on JW Player, um, if I actually come into the player itself, you can grab the JavaScript library and reference that yourself and then use your own JavaScript to control a lot more of the player if you want to do some more advanced customization. And in fact, that's what we do on our own site. We we reference the player um, in the cloud, the cloud player, so we have the newest versions um, of the JavaScript that's available. And I, I think that's probably, it depends on the use case there, right, Eric? Some people do want to host this locally inside of a network. Some people actually should probably use the cloud URL so they can make sure they have the newest version of the code. Yeah, it's about a 50-50 a, a split. Um, there, there's a lot of use cases around just being able to get those automatic updates right away. So as, as user agents are changing, uh, JW Player is changing with them to make sure that it's always up to date with the latest uh, browser changes. But in, a, in an effort to also give um, publishers and, and customers uh, insight into what's actually coming up in, in the player for these cloud hosted libraries, we've actually introduced this concept of release channels. So you can actually create a beta version of the player or a staging version of the player uh, by going to this advanced tab and you can choose the release channel and each one of these channels has a, a version of the player on it. Uh, production is obviously the most stable version. It's been there, it's been tested, it's been live for uh, probably X number of weeks. The staging channel is usually a version of the player that's gone through an entire suite of our automated tests and our, our, our manual regression tests. So that's a, that's a version of the player that's about to be promoted to production. And it's one that you can use for integration tests. And then the beta one is really cool because this is what gives you insight into what's actually up and coming 
uh, in our, our next version of the player. Uh, and this one's pretty neat right now in that it actually is pointing at our, our next version that has HLS, uh, the streaming functionality that we're talking about, to be viewed in HTML5 mode in Chrome. So switching right over to that gives you a quick insight into what's coming up and allows you to test it out and try it out for yourself. Perfect. And we'll include these URLs as well. We have a, a great support article on how to use JW Player with Wowza with a, a video tutorial. I know we kind of ran through it really quickly today, but this gives you some good code examples. Um, this particular one is how to actually use Wowza Transcoder to um, to do live streaming and to do adaptive bitrate like I just showed with those name groups. And then we have another support article on how to do live stream DVR. So we actually walked through very quickly how to do that as well and enable that and then pass that functionality on to, uh, to JW. So with that, Eric, I think we did a quick overview of how to get HLS um, adaptive bitrate running with both WOWS and JW. So thanks for, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for joining.